What's up guys, Big Ape 93 here today to bring you my Dragon Ball Super episode 55 review and not a lot happened this week. We basically pick up from where we left off last week with the Omni King wanting to talk to Goku and we uh, have Beerus and Whis freaking out still. So basically they summon Goku there and they tell him that the Omni King wants to see him and they're still freaking out because they're telling Goku or trying to explain to him that he needs to be on his best behavior and be respectful and not to go challenging everyone there to a fight, more or less. It's also during this time that we get the recently released information that was in the previous Dragon Ball Super manga chapter that the Kais and the Gods of Destruction are a set and that if the Kai dies, the God of Destruction also dies. As with everyone else that is reviewing Super, I'm going to wait and hold out and see if they uh, elaborate on that more because otherwise it creates more of a plot hole because they don't explain which Supreme Kai he's linked to and also how that works because if you remember in Z there were like five Supreme Kais before Boo killed all of them and it just creates a whole nother can of worms that nobody wants to mess with right now until they elaborate on it further. Because as is tradition in Dragon Ball, they wouldn't bring it up if there's not going to be something involving it later on down the road. So maybe something could happen to Beerus. We'll just have to wait and see. Otherwise, moving on, Beerus and Whis tell Goku not to bring up the time machine or the business with Black to the Omni King or else he could get mad and just destroy everything. Then it's explained in a bit that it would take... Weiss at least two days to go there one way to the Omni King's palace, but the Supreme Kai's can do it instantly. Go figure, that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? So Goku instant transmissions Weiss to the Supreme Kai planet, and they explain that the Omni King wants to see Goku, and for those of you wondering, Beerus doesn't go just because he's scared out of his mind. And in this bit, basically the same thing that happened on Beerus' planet with uh, Kibito, Supreme Kai, and Old Kai telling Goku not to play around with the Omni King because he could literally wipe everything out. So Supreme Kai takes them to the Omni King planet where they meet this guy and he is like, I'll take you right to the Omni King. And while they're walking, Goku comments to Whis that this guy must be extremely powerful. Whis tells Goku that he is surprised that he could tell, and he explains that he is one of the high priests and that he has one of the top five power levels across all 12 universes. Or as Whis puts it to uh, terms Goku can understand, not even he could go up against him is what Whis said. So that's something right there. Somebody Whis couldn't go up against? Okay, so they finally get there. They get to the Omni King's chamber. So what could the Omni King want with Goku? Well... Guess what? Omni King wants a friend. And to sum it up quickly, not a lot happens in this segment. There's a lot of talking and everyone's freaking out because Goku is just talking to him so casually. Goku explains to him that he's very busy and that he will come back to play with him when he wraps up what he's doing and that Omni King should come visit Earth sometime. So, wink wink, let's see where we go with this in the future. And Goku tells him that he wouldn't make a very good friend, but he does know someone that would make a good friend. So I wonder who that'll be once we get to that part. And before Goku leaves, Omni King gives him this button and he says, Press this and I will appear immediately to where you are. So I don't know if they're going to use that with the stuff going on with Black. I doubt they would because it's in a future timeline, but you never know. We'll just have to wait and see. So after this... Goku and them teleport back to the Supreme Kai planet and then after that he takes Whis back to Beerus's planet and Beerus is just happy that they're still alive except when he hears about what Goku's new name for Omni King is and it freaks him out and he just falls over as they do in Dragon Ball and that's about it for that segment. So Goku teleports back to Earth with instant transmission and we get into the ending segment where the time machine is ready and they all get in and they go to the future and they get there and as Trunks explained to them everything there was basically wrecked and Goku and Vegeta are basically shocked at how bad everything is there. Trunks begins looking around and he sees Mai's hat and runs towards it with Vegeta following him and Trunks explains that this is where Mai should have been so maybe she's still alive. 
Otherwise, we get a little bit with Goku walking around and the resistance fighters must think he's black, so in fashion, they shoot a bunch of weapons at Goku to end the episode, and Goku is staring there shocked. And as far as the preview for next week, it looks like it's going to be a very, very action-packed episode with the debut of Super Saiyan Rose and uh, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta just pounding away at Black, and Black seems to be just laughing it off, and then we get... Goku transforming into his Super Saiyan Blue form, and that's about it for the trailer, so we're going to have a very good episode next week. Overall, I enjoyed the episode. I just feel like the arc is just flying by. I hope there's more to this, and we're not wrapping up the black portion of everything. The only thing that has really bugged me about the second time machine is, and I don't think I've heard anyone talk about it yet, and it's probably just because no one wants to bring it up, or we know that Toei or Toriyama really wouldn't think of it as an issue, is the fact that they said it was the time machine that Shell used. So, going by what we know in Dragon Ball time travel, that should be linked to the timeline where Cell came from, which is still the future timeline, but it would be the one where Trunks deactivated the androids with the remote control and was going to go back to tell everybody that he saved the future, but Cell came along and killed him. Not that it's going to affect the overall arcing story branch here, but I just wish they would have uh, reflected on that a little bit more, because otherwise it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's just me rambling. Otherwise, that's all I have for you guys this week, so let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this week's episode and if you're excited for where everything's heading for this fight. And as always, if you liked what you saw here today, make sure you drop a like on the video. And if you want to get more content, make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest news. And if you want to keep up with anything else geek related or anything fun that I'm following, then you can always like my Facebook page or follow me on Twitter for the latest. As always, you all have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.